now let's bring in Wedbush Securities, Nick Setian, for more. He covers the restaurant space. Uh, Nick, great to see you. Thanks for having me. Um, when you heard that McDonald's was extending, did you get more optimistic about uh, earnings and revenues for the year? Or what was your initial reaction? Because there's a sort of a give and a take, obviously. I mean, I would imagine that the margins would be thinner, but they would increase traffic. You know, it's not a surprise. Uh, I think they, they, it's not the perfect solution. Uh, they are working on a better solution that will probably come out in early 2025. So this is a stopgap measure until then. But, you know, certainly the context is that there's just been too much inflation in QSR, McDonald's, you know, over 40 percent versus 2019, uh, grocery much less. So the third of the customers that are direct meal replacement, you know, they don't, they don't care what, what, what brand they're, they're buying from. They just want the cheapest price. They moved to grocery and convenience, and McDonald's has to, you know, regain some of that share. This is their answer. It's not a perfect answer, but it is a stopgap until they figure out a better answer, probably in, you know, one age 25. Has it always been the case that McDonald's customers aren't necessarily brand loyal, that they just wanted the value for their money? Because that seems like a bigger problem. If there's not actually inherent loyalty to this particular brand or, or the, these particular meals, it's just how cheap can you get it, then that's that's a very difficult field to compete in. I'd say about a third of, of the customers, you know, if you think about that lower, the very low income, you know, customer, the value menu customer, and has always historically used, you know, McDonald's and other QSR peers uh, as direct meal replacement. Uh, and that's always been the case. Uh, McDonald's has always been a value leader because of that. And they've always, you know, garnered success because of that. But, but Nick, hey, it's Tim. Uh, sounds to me, look, when I hear $5 meal and I hear extension, I hear that the, the drivers that you just talked about, I, I hear margin pressure. And I wonder what multiple uh, you think about McDonald's in context. And maybe if you can compare that to maybe how you were thinking about that multiple two years ago uh, or four years ago or, or you know, even pre-COVID, because we know the world has changed in terms of those cost inputs, the labor cost inputs. Um, that, to me, is where you get to with McDonald's, because I, I think the brands there, uh, Crocs, Keychains, or, or not. You know, remember, McDonald's is a primarily franchise concept. So uh, at the end of the day, what you care about a lot more is the top line and the bottom line. And the franchisees are the ones that are dealing with the margin pressures. Uh, at the end of the day, investors, uh, really, all we care about is the royalties. Now, they do have a company-owned, you know, portfolio. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's a, it's a very small percentage of the overall system. Nick, I'm wondering, if, you know, from your standpoint, when you when you take a look at sort of the macro backdrop, do you agree that um, the consumer will f continue to face challenges the same that they're facing right now or, or increased challenges going to the end of the year? Because what this is implying in terms of extending that five dollar value meal is that that is the case, that that is the macro backdrop, that things won't improve necessarily for the consumer. You know, I'm pretty optimistic at the end of the day. You know, to me, this is more about just bringing pricing in line with grocery. Uh, if you remember, we had another price war back in 2016 and 2018. You know, we weren't in a recession back then, right? It's just that we had another extended period of, of restaurant inflation led by labor inflation at the time uh, that was, you know, over and above grocery inflation. So you see these uh, cycles from time to time. Uh, so to me, it's not necessarily that it's a uh, you know, consumer slowdown issue. It's, it's, it literally is just that, you know, in the near term, we've had some share shift away from QSR and McDonald's uh, towards uh, grocery, particularly value grocery and convenience stores. And so McDonald's, to me, is, in my opinion, is doing the right thing uh, by making sure that gap versus grocery mm -hmm. is going back in line with what it has been historically.